How are you again? Look, remember last time, I think it was last time I preached, I said I wanted to do a message on gathering unto his name. Well, now's the time. I want to do that now, so we'll just go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just come to thee again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray thy blessing upon my word now, Lord, as we look at it together. We just pray that if anyone out there who will be uh, uh, listening to this or looking uh, at this on YouTube later on, online, we just pray thy blessing upon them, Father, they might be able to understand these things. And we realise that not many of thy people actually understand this, and we just pray that thou will give them wisdom to understand these things, and, um, and as a result, they might gather out from the denominations of men unto thy Son alone. We just ask thy blessing upon thy word as we look at it now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, yeah, so gathering unto his name, that is, unto the name of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Now, many believers meet in a denomination of men. Now, I believe that God is against the denominations of men. God did not institute that as an institution that we should uh, gather together with organisations and religions of any description of man. God designed that we should gather unto the Lord Jesus Christ alone. I wanted to explain that, and I hope I can make this fairly plain as we look at it together. Now, the word church, first mentioned after Pentecost in Acts 2, verse 47, should have been translated assembly, or more accurately, ecclesia, which means a company of called out ones that is called out of the world. Now, if you want, if you've got Strong's, you can look it up. It's Strong's number 1577, if you want to look that up, if you've got Strong's uh, at your disposal. So in the beginning of the church age, beginning in Acts 2, verse 41, baptised believers were added to the company. Then they that uh, gladly received his word were baptised, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. It must have been wonderful to see 3,000 people come to the Lord at, in that one day. <coughs> That was amazing. Uh, verse 47 says, Praising God and having favour with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now when the word uh, is used, it always refers to people. Acts 11.22. Go there. Acts 11 verse 22. Yeah, Acts 11, verse 22, the first part. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears. Did you get that? Came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. Have you ever seen a building with ears hanging off it? No, that's right. No, neither have I. It's a bit of a, it's funny, but it, you really need to think about this. It came to the ears of the church. In other words, it's ears of people. The church is actually the people. The people are actually the church. It's not a building. And we need to get that out of our heads. Um, now, Acts 15, verse 22. Acts 15, verse 22. Uh, the first part, then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their com own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. And Romans uh, 16 and verse 5. Okay, Romans 16 and verse 5. The first part, likewise, greet the church that is in their house. 
So here were a group of Christians, and, and in the early days, they used to meet in their own homes, in their houses. And here's a group of believers, an assembly of God's people, a group that's gathered together unto the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see that later on. And they're, they're meeting... Um, they're meeting in their house. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. In other words, it's not a building within a house. Get the idea. Again, it's speaking of the people. It's not a building. It, it, like most people think, it's a building, but it's not. Well, not a physical building in that sense, anyway. In other words, it's impossible to go to church because the church is the people. It's made up of believers, saved, baptized believers meeting together at a, at a certain locality so they can come together for prayer, for preaching, for, um, for various activities of an assembly of God's people. So we really need to take that on board and understand that it's not a building. God has desired way back in the Old Testament times that his people gather unto himself. Let's look at the principle as seen in the Old Testament. Let's go back to Genesis 49 and verse 10. Genesis 49 and verse 10. <clears throat> The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him, do you get that? Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Shiloh means to whom it belongs or whose it is. And uh, Psalm 50 verse 5. Psalm 50, verse 5. <clears throat> Gather my saints together unto me. Notice that. Unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now we know this is, that was speaking in the Old Testament. And so it was speaking about Old Testament sacrifice. You know, the animals that were slain. The blood was shed. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. You might have already uh, realized that verse. But in our day, this would mean the sacrifice of Christ when he offered himself without spot to God. Hebrews 9, verses 11 to 15. Yeah, Hebrews 9, verse 11. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, is the mediator of the New Testament, or New Covenant, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, 
uh, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now let's look at Matthew 18.20. I know this is to do with prayer, but wouldn't it apply to any scriptural meeting of an assembly of God's people? The following is the meaning in the Greek Texas Receptus 16.11. For where they are, two or three led together unto my name, there am I in the midst of them. Let us read that again. For where they are, two or three led together unto my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, where is the place of gathering? Ah, uh, this word is in the imperative tense. It means to do and continue to do, not once off or occasionally. You know, it's not that you go on holidays and you, uh, you know, down the beach or somewhere or out in the bush and you say, okay, let's just meet together and we're going to remember the Lord out here in the bush and all that sort of thing. No, that's not really what's meant there. It's meant to do and continue to do. It's a continual thing. Now, two or three, the smallest number of witness. 2 Corinthians 13, 1 says, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So that's the smallest amount of people you can have a witness. That, um, and so that's why it says two or three. Now, led together, that is led together by the Holy Spirit. And that's important. Led together by the Holy Spirit. We need to see these things. We need to be convicted of these things by the Holy Spirit. And we might understand these things to be led together by the Holy Spirit. Now, unto my name, unto is motion. The name shows authority and character. Acts 2.36 says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Luke Luke 6, 46, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Lord means supreme in authority or controller. In other words, everything should be done in a scriptural manner to show that we own the Lordship of Christ by obeying his word. Uh, there am I. What a wonderful person our Lord Jesus Christ is. And... Um, Revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 1 and verse 8. Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter 1 and verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, and as you know, that's the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. The beginning and the ending saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Almighty One. In means in a fixed position of rest. If he's resting, he must be happy to be in the midst of our, uh, by our obedience to the Word of God. And that's important. The midst means middle, just like the tabernacle, in Old Testament times, you know, remember in the Old Testament, they used to have the tabernacle in the middle and the around about the tabernacle were the tents where the people were, were living and, and um, dwelling. But in the middle was the tabernacle, signifying the presence of God. 
And in this case, the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know he is God anyway. Now, of them, what a privileged people we are. I want to look now at uh, unto him without the camp. Hebrews 13, verses 12 to 14. In Hebrews 13, verse 12, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Without is away from the camp, used for the city of Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem was the center of worship at that time. This shows separation from the world and religious organizations. Verse 14, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. When a a person understands the truth of gathering unto the Lord's name alone, this should automatically cut off any ties with the religious organizations of men. We need to stay away from the religious organizations of men. I believe that God expects us to make a clear cut from all religious groups. I mean, man-made religious groups. That way, when people ask us where we meet or why we gather like we do, we can tell them about God's desire for them to be gathered unto the name of his son, owning his lordship. This is God's desire for all the people of God. I don't mean that we can't uh, have personal fellowship with other believers. I mean God doesn't want us to have fellowship or join together with them as a group because we have understood the truth of gathering unto the Lord Jesus Christ alone so that he receives all the glory. After all, He is the one who died for us. In conclusion, we must be convicted by the Holy Spirit to see these truths. Otherwise, there's a danger of meeting amongst the organizations and denominations of men which divide the people of God or divide God's people. Uh, Now, in saying these things, I'm not saying that anyone in a denomination of men or or an organisation of men, a religious organisation of men, anyone who's within those groups is not saved. I'm not saying that at all. Don't misunderstand me. Please don't misunderstand me. There are many of God's people, in fact, most of God's people, are meeting among the denominations of men. God wants us to see the difference. He wants us to see that that is not right, that he, his desire for us is that we gather unto the name of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. So I repeat, I'm not saying if you meet with the denominations of men, I'm not saying that you are not saved. There are people who are not saved among those groups and among every group of Christians. But I'm saying that God wants us as the true people of God, those who have been born again into God's family through repentance toward God, that's acknowledging my sinful condition before the Lord and admitting it before God, and then faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. If we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're saved by the grace of God. God wants us to meet and gather unto his dear son's name alone without any denomination or influence of denominations of men. So if you have questions about this, any sort of questions, feel free to email me on dgw8, that's dgw and then the number 8, at yahoo.com. That's dgw8 at yahoo.com. God bless you and thanks for listening and I hope you've understood this. Just close with a word of prayer.
Lord, we come to thee again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give you thanks that we can preach these things to the people. We just pray that if there's anyone listening, any of thy people who are listening, who are interested in this, the way of gathering like thou would have us to do, that they might contact me, get in contact with me so I can explain it a bit more more in detail maybe if, if they're not understanding this or anything. Just pray that I might try and be a help unto thy people, that we might understand thy word, we might understand the truth, the wonderful truth and privilege and responsibility of gathering unto the name of our Lord Jesus Christ alone. I just thank thee for this time and pray thy blessing upon thy word that will bring conviction upon thy people in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.